Hey everybody, uh, I'm here with a new band to me. It's Chris Callahan from uh, Shrimp Chaperone. Shrimp Chaperone. And um, it's a really, really great album they put out last year, correct? I, it might have even been longer ago, I'm ashamed to say. But yeah, Trilobite Weekend uh, is our is our only album out so far. But you've been around a while. We have been around for literally 25 years. So tell me what you what you've done in that period. Uh, like, just give me a a background. That's a that's a rich history you have to talk about. I'm not really old enough to have been around for that first wave of surf. I was born a few years after that, but there was a second wave going on when I graduated from high school in the early 80s. And there was a band in Santa Clara, I mean, Santa Cruz called The Humans, which was probably just sort of a bar band of its time. But they had an album with a B-side that was Pipeline. So that was, I. then I, I, my buddy Bill and I went down this rabbit hole of who are the ventures, you know, and, and what did they take this stuff from? And we were doing ventures covers in high school, which wasn't cool. But we loved it. And and I got to see the ventures uh, at that time, which was it would have been pretty much everybody. I mean, it's freakish to me that Noki Edwards and. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the of the bass player, but they switched instruments. It freaks me out that their first hit is with the bass player playing guitar. Like that kind of stuff amazes me and I love it. So yes, Pipeline. Pipeline brought me into surf and it, and it's my uh, my first surf love. Anyways, oh. so, so oh. skip ahead a little bit uh, to me moving to Tucson in the mid nineties and hooking up with my buddy, Paul, who uh, was learning to play bass, had played guitar and we just started putting together this band. So uh it came it came out of my love of surf and him wanting to be in the band i think great great so uh when you started you, you say 25 years ago so that was kind of like in the middle of the the third wave correct yep absolutely and there are other bands in tucson at the time big galoot which was sort of aging out in a way but they were doing shows kind of like we do now where they're kind of coming out of retirement sometimes to do stuff or you know, people forget who they are. But they actually are still around in a different form, but they've been around. They were around decades before we were around here and they were they had been together in uh, in high school and now they do the Determined Luddites, which is a folk outfit. But, um, but they can still whip out that surf stuff. And the picture behind me, one of the guys in Big Glute uh, is a piano tuner and all of his basket cases, they burn at a piano burn once a year and we played this year and so that behind me is our little mini uh burning man of uh pianos while we're playing uh, i'm assuming miserloo when it really gets going dude that's crazy yeah it's fun i never even knew something like that existed is that like that's a, is that specifically the two song it is a desert party and the excuse for the desert party and going out and drinking beer and whatnot is to burn those pianos and have a bonfire. So they have to let the, it's way out in the desert and they have to let the fire department know about it. So it's sanctioned and, uh, and yeah, but there's no better situation. Some of the bands and us even once or twice have been too close to the fire. And, and I know that some drum skins have been uh, bubbled. At oh, the piano wow. burns, so it's it's <laughs> yeah. good to be a certain amount of feet away. Yeah, uh, I want to ask you now. Now that's one of the interesting stories I was talking about. Uh, but uh, what was it like to be? I mean, for me, when Pulp Fiction hit and that third wave came, it was like, oh man, this is like going to be a great. Like the '90s were great for music to begin with, but that was just another. You know, that was just more gasoline added to the fire. There was another genre to be happy about. What was that like being a band during that time? That Well, that's a very good point, because not only were we trying to do our own thing, which was, you know, to do sort of weird, ironic covers in a surf style. We did the Go-Go's. We did Thelonious Monk. We, we have done uh, Lady Gaga. So we want to do current things or things that are sort of like surprising in a surf vein. And also go back to my, you know, Ventures roots, but the Ventures are pretty tame. And the Pulp Fiction soundtrack had some actual 
stuff that people would have heard besides that. And yeah, that third wave is when all the little labels started like collecting all these gems that had been around and nobody had heard. And all these names come out and we find out half of it was a wrecking crew, you know, just pretending to be 13 and, and doing like uh, the lively ones comes to mind. Isn't that the wrecking crew? There's yeah. a couple of those that are just like, you know, Tommy Tedesco, uh, you know, pretending he's 13 and, and playing a surf song. But it still works. I mean, don't get me wrong, that uh, freaking Surfrider. Uh, yeah. Surfrider is one of the ones they did, but I believe Noki Edwards wrote that as Sput. Gosh, I want to say it was Sputnik. It had it had a space name, and then and then it was redone under that Surfrider name. And that's another great song. And that's a Noki Edwards composition, I believe. Yeah, and and uh, what what I thought was special is uh, a, a record that was near a record label that was near and dear to me, Epitaph Records, uh, with mm-hmm. that punk label. They they made uh, Epitone which was a specific surf label because they were expecting to release a whole bunch of surf music. Be- be- uh, because they saw it coming back. Yeah, but they only released the Blue Stingrays, which just got reissued. Not not by them, though. I see. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, but uh, they said that was Tom Petty's band. I don't know. Do you know if that was? I don't know, but it's interesting you should say that because I know that some people started out in surf that would surprise you and some people ended up in surf that would surprise you. This doesn't surprise me at all. And uh, also, uh, Elliot, the guitar player for the Cars, he, like he started with surf and I think he still does surf, which is pretty cool. I like that. In fact, I think I, I'm, I'm like a compatriot of his kind of, because I got into New Wave. I mean, I got into the Cars and stuff in the early yeah. 80s and the go-go's but the go-go's were so surf adjacent you know i know i know yeah it, it those have been some good times the cool thing is that third wave of surf i don't think it ever went away it stayed underground and it and it and it morphed and it bloomed and you have the surf 101 folks and the and the tiki oasis folks and people keeping it alive and awesome real bands like the surfer jets who i think are just amazing because yeah, yeah. they're doing it just how like I would do it, and and it sounds great. Yeah, the, um, there are some things that the Surfer Jets did that didn't wind up on the LP. That you know they used to put out those social media posts. I remember I check them out, and they did uh, Toxic by Britney Spears. It's a great they one. Did Heart of Glass by Blondie, and I'm just like, wait, wait till these got these girls put out a fucking album. It's gonna be. It's going to be astonishing. Mm-hmm. Everyone's always trying to be a little safe, too. My buddy Paul always wants to play to that one person in the audience that'll get it, you know, which is why we were doing like Thelonious Monk covers and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, but that stuff, any you can play anything with a twangy guitar and some reverb and it in a surf beat. It just works. Like I said, yeah. my buddy James, who books down here, calls it the great equalizer. Like if you have to book a band that has to please like the whole gamut of people that are there surf like it just it can't offend anyone it just sounds good yeah yeah it's like the a lot of different music translates well because it's easily recognizable when the melody is being played on the lead guitar absolutely so uh i know there's uh quite a bit going on in arizona in tucson as far as the surf scene why don't you tell me about that there are some young dudes that are around that are trying to get things going and trying to get a scene going, and that's awesome. I We get trotted out for some of these big shows, and we have yet to be on a show with the Dirty Licks or the Desert Undertones, which are the two bands that Eli reminded me of this morning. Excellent. Um, Excellent. I've seen the Dirty Licks, and I remember thinking a sort of rockabilly punk sort of take on surf. Yeah. And I have not seen the Desert Undertones, but there's other bands that have been around for a bit like, oh, and their name is going to escape me. But there's a band that it kind of does Western, spaghetti Western sort of influenced uh, stuff. They're not quite surf, but they just work out so well with us in the past. And the Furies, which are they've been around almost as long as we have. They started out as Wolfman and the Nards back in the day. And um, so, oh, and we had the Surf Rods. 
for some time and they ended i believe in october when amy moved on to do other stuff but they were a sort of marquee act in tucson because they you know they put on a show and they would do fun yeah. metal covers and stuff like that so it was it was cool it's not it wasn't pure surf but what we aren't either so. <laughs> but, oh and surfside four up in phoenix and they trot themselves out every once in a while i don't think phoenix has a super thriving scene but surfside four are you know, they'll put together a show now and then and we'll go up and we've played with the Furies and Wolfman and the Nards and us and some other bands up in Phoenix from time to time. But yes, we haven't put together a big surf show yet. And I know the Desert Undertones, we're trying to put something together down here. And we have Surf Palooza coming up again in August, either August 3rd or August 10th at Club Congress. Once a year, they put together like a, a surf show and have fish tacos and drink specials and uh you know sometimes they'll have a jumping castle or a pool they had a pool set up last year and it'll just be surf and it was us and the furies and and an unfortunate cover band doing beach boys and Janet Dean covers oh boy yeah it was pretty uh, cool. have you heard she verb she verb i have not heard where are they um i thought they were around your area i could oh no then they're i suck they're definitely southwest it's a all-girl band uh kind of spaghetti western oh that's awesome yeah they're great shiver they're really good i have not heard that name but i will absolutely check it and i i'm just not as plugged in with the young surf bands in town as i should be and um eli's been trying to hook that up for us so one of these days we got to get out and do if we could get them involved in surf surf palooza is what i'm thinking so maybe i'll try to make that a a campaign is that is that something that that you're heavily involved with? Well, uh, David Slutz, who has booked at Congress for decades, is leaving on Saturday. I think is his last day there. But he's the one that's always put this together, and so he sent out the email yesterday. So I don't know that he's actually going to be managing it. But there's a gentleman over there named Curtis who uh, runs all the band stuff now, and so he'll be putting that together. And so we need to get in his ear about who to book this year because it would be cool to make it a real surf festival and everyone's going to like it. Oh, I know. Who was it? Oh, my God. I can't think of their name. It's going to drive me crazy. But there's another band that was around, a real punky surf band the whole time we were. Oh, my gosh. I can't remember their name, but they just seem like little kids. They're like 45 now, but they still seem like little kids and they just like rock it out with like an Ibanez to a Marshall, but it's surf. And it's yeah. very cool. I can't think of the name. Oh, I suck. Anyway, yes, we have a thriving scene. I don't know any other name. That's <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem now. Well, what I want to uh, tell our viewers is there's going to be links to uh, uh, Shrimp Chaperone's social media, their band campaigns where you can go sample their their album, which is excellent. Thank and uh, look them up in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, I want one last time to remind uh, our viewers, uh, Surfer Palooza, one more time, please. Yes, Surfer Palooza Club Congress. It's either going to be on the 3rd or the 10th of August this year. And it's all surf music and surf style fun and the Tiki Oasis type folks enjoy it. So if you like that, you'll like this. Great. Is there anything you'd like to add that I may not have asked about or ask me something or anything? Um, well, uh, I do not know much about Pi Records. Are you a surf label? Uh, well, we started off that way, and uh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Down by Law, which is a punk band. Um, and I follow them since the early '90s. And Sam, the guitar player, put a a surf band together called Black Valley Moon, and we put out a seven inch by them. And oh, that's awesome. I, yeah, I, I quickly found out I'm a terrible record label, um, <laughs> but I'm oh I'm okay asking questions about music, and I, you know, I found out the surf music scene was was huge. Oh, it's awesome! Yeah, and uh, I have terrible social anxiety and speaking skills and relationship building, so I thought during the pandemic this may be a way to help cure that, and it's it's. It's done some done some good things for me, and I've found a lot of great music. So that's, that's basically awesome. the that's basically the gist of it. Well, I love that you're doing a fine job. I'd say. Well, thanks <clears> so much. 